that's not a good first car. As you might imagine, I now very often get asked whether this car or that car makes a good first car for uh, high school age uh, kids in particular. A lot of subscribers, believe it or not, are in the 15 to 20 year old range. And that puts them in the category for people looking for their first car, whether it's a car they're looking for that their parents are gonna buy for them while they're in high school, or if it's a, a first car that they're gonna buy while they're out on their own. And this one in particular strikes home uh, because I'm currently searching for this type of car as a project for the channel, and that is a 350Z. Again, this is just one of the options I'm searching for, but the more and more I look into this particular platform, I've established a number of opinions about this particular platform uh, over the course of the last couple of months, looking harder and harder uh, at available cars. There's a lot of things to take into consideration, whether or not you feel, or whether I feel, I guess, in giving my opinion, uh, that the 350Z is a good first car. There's obviously our price point, availability, aftermarket support, you know, insurance costs, gas costs, costs of ownership, uh, outside of gas, just the typical maintenance and upkeep. Uh, so there's some things to keep in mind uh, as you consider a 350Z for your first car, but let's get into this a little bit. Well, after I get through some of these points, there's gonna be a bunch of you saying, oh, hell no, it's not a good first car, but let's let's get through this and see what happens. Uh, first thing, uh, availability, there's a ton of them. There's a bunch of 350Zs across the country. Uh, the chances are that you have some for sale local to you or within a relatively easy driving distance. The chances are pretty high that there's gonna be a bunch of them. That goes along with aftermarket support, tons of aftermarket support, forums, Facebook groups, uh, part suppliers, parts availability is huge. Um, and that goes toward uh, maintenance, uh, maintenance, I'll leave the cost out of it, but um, there's a, parts are readily, uh, readily available. So um, you can find a range of deals. Uh, so I'll say that. They're obviously sporty little cars. They're only, you know, two seater. So uh, I like that actually as a parent of a teenager because the fewer seats in the car, the fewer people they can bring with them and fewer the distractions. Obviously being a sporty car, they are a sporty car, but they're not all that fast. So it's a, it's appealing uh, to a young driver, a young enthusiast because they are sporty. Uh, you can make them sound pretty good. Uh, you can also make them sound horrible. Well, I've talked about that before, but you can make them sound pretty good uh, and they're appealing to youngsters so that makes them a, a good first car in that regard uh, gets them into a car that they enjoy however they are sporty and uh, you know kids can take that in a wrong direction as well but like i said they're not super fast so they're not gonna be not like you're putting them into a corvette or something like that so getting into cost of ownership type uh discussion um, they do pretty well on gas mileage, so gas isn't going to be outrageous. Now, they're not the best, and they're older vehicles, so uh, the mileage isn't going to be as good as it used to be. And getting to the point where at 14, 15 plus year old vehicles now, they're not all that expensive to insure. However, as a young driver, it's not going to be cheap no matter how you slice it. So just think about that. I mean, that could range depending on where you're from. Uh, driving experience, whether you've taken classes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's different uh, for every state and city. But you know, a 16 year old driver being insured could be an extra hundred dollars a month, could be an extra 200, 250, 300 dollars extra a month for a young driver on your policy. Some states get real, real crazy with this kind of stuff, so just keep that in mind. Again, with overall age of the vehicle, we can talk again about cost of ownership and my experience now shopping for these vehicles they are all trash guys i don't know what people have done well i do know i do know it's done and actually it's kind of right in line with this video it's a sporty car the price point speaking of age is really attainable and you know something that a lot of young folks can accomplish with just a you know like a part-time job in high school even you can find these for three four five thousand dollars out there right now um, but even those that are getting into the six seven eight thousand dollar range they've just all been beat to hell and that's what happens when you have an affordable rear wheel drive you know manual transmission car the younger people get a hold of them and they beat the hell out of them and they're two-door and they're sporty and like i said they're real real drive so people want to have fun and i don't blame them you know i was the same way when i was 16 17 18 years old 
uh, burnouts, donuts in the parking lot, uh, you know, stoplight to stoplight, dig races, just slamming gears, snapping necks and cashing checks, beating the hell out of the car. And a lot of people have done that to these cars. So all literally 95% of the 350Zs you see out there available right now under the $10,000 price range, ugh, you, you never know what you're going to get into. Even if they're relatively low miles, 120, 130,000 miles, some are under 100,000 miles, they've still been beat on or transmissions and clutches have been replaced. Engines have been replaced. There's just a lot to keep in mind when shopping 350Zs because you don't know what the hell the story is. And I don't know if necessarily that's something that a young person wants to get into. I mean, especially if engines have been swapped. Uh, I mean, make sure there's paperwork and uh, documentation of mileage of the, the engine that was swapped in. Um, you just, I hate taking over other people's problems. Uh, and with a car that has been put through the ringer, it's got higher miles, it's seen 15, 17 years of life on the road, you just really don't know what you're getting into. And it's just kind of, the price point is so appealing. And because they're sporty, cool little cars, it, it just, it you know, it draws these people's, these young people's attention. And it could be detrimental because ultimately you're going to be spending a bunch more money keeping that thing on the road potentially. Uh, whereas if you would have just spent a couple of extra thousand bucks up front, got a little different vehicle maybe, or something that was, you know, in better shape, uh, you could avoid a lot of that. So something to consider also. On top of all that, a majority of them burn a bunch of oil, leak a bunch of oil, leak coolant, uh, have their rattle traps, interior parts are falling apart, seats are all torn up and messed up. Uh, who knows what the hell kind of wheels they got on these things or what the condition of the brakes or the suspension are in. <sighs> we're getting higher mileage and again, they've been beat on. So we're looking for uh, if the transmissions haven't been replaced, they're going to need to be replaced shortly. Uh, potential for engine replacements necessary. <laughs> so what's the verdict? Good first car or not? Get to it. We'll recap the positives. Readily available. Pretty decent price point. Uh, probably one of the less expensive to insure vehicles simply because they're 15 plus years old at this point. Not too bad on gas mileage. Parts are readily available and relatively cheap. Uh, two-seater so you know your young kids can't take a bunch of friends with them uh, there's a good chance you might find a manual transmission teach your kid to drive a manual that just means all of his friends or her friends are not going to be able to drive that car which is always a bonus uh, when well maintained and um, you know properly kept up they can be a really stout car a really really reliable and durable platform despite all of that however they are a sporty car at a decent price point which means they've been touched They've been touched uh, and not gently. Uh, it's hard to find one at a good price point that's been taken care of, to be quite honest. And the ones that are still expensive, it's just hard to justify spending $10,000 on a car that's almost 20 years old, has a bunch of miles racked up on it. There, there's other options out there, I would say, um, that are probably a better choice. Um, but it is hard to find something that is that sporty and that fun. In that price point so you gotta weigh some things um, and the chances that it needs some new parts or it needs to be brought back up to standard is pretty likely to be quite honest so on top of what you're spending on the car uh, look at spending some additional money uh, to get that thing going again um, and, and being road worthy for a young driver I would say if you are mechanically inclined um, you know, you you like working on cars and you have a source of income that's not just going to be buying the vehicle and then you got nothing else in the bank and nothing else coming in, I would say avoid this car. But again, if you like to work on cars, you got a little bit of money, you got a side job or a full-time job and you're just a young, a young person, um, then you could probably handle it because it's going to need some work. It's going to need maintenance and to save as much money as you possibly can sourcing parts and doing stuff on your own that's going to be the best way to go about it but again if you don't know anything about cars you're just getting into it and you just like the 350z because all they look and sound uh, but you ain't got money and you don't have a job just stay away from it that's what i got on the 350z guys let me know your experience in the comments below i think they are really really cool vehicles it's just not one that i would probably recommend for a 15 16 17 year old kid with no experience uh, i 
it's just, this, just my opinion. Uh, but for me, I think it's a kind of a cool idea. So I'm still shopping. I'll keep you guys posted on what's coming up for the channel car. I appreciate you guys uh, watching and your continued support. We'll see you in the next one.